thing? Okay, let me, let, all right, I'll get you set up. Uh, is it okay for you? Hello? Well, anyway, I, I, I just can start here. We're from, uh, I'm, I'm a participant from Barcelona Supercomputing Center. Keep in mind that we are a public research center. This is important because most of people think that we are private. We are a, a public institution. And uh, uh, I'm just, I'm not the main speaker here. Yeah, okay. So just to say I'm not the main speaker, just here, just to frame you what Serena led uh, in, in, this, uh, in this project. So, I mean, uh, what you will see now is that, uh, um, yeah, the project is, is framed into what we call BCT. I mean, it's a, it's a kind of a project to try to democratize digital tools for cities. And what's that? I mean, it's kind of a, maybe you have heard this idea of digital twins and digital twins for cities. We're trying to democratize the technology so in such a way any city can use the tools, okay, in an open way, as open as possible. And that's why we're partnering with the city. The idea is that we truly believe that we need to get feedback from the citizens to help these solutions. And this is why BCT is kind of a a human-centric platform, I and mean, this is not a slogan. This should we believe that this is like the way to go. Even though we are the techie people in the room, maybe we really believe that these solutions should be human-centric, and that's why we're partnering with with the city as well. So I'm not going to go into details, but just go to the web page. It's bcity.tech. So we're preparing a platform, uh, but we also uh, be involved in use cases, and that's why we're partnering with the city. So, for example, we're working with Barcelona in proximity, air quality, cycling, how to extend cyclanes, mobility as well, and sustainability. So, if you really just feel free to reach out to me if you need to get into more details. So, that's your. Yeah. Okay. So, can you hear me fine? Uh, so one of the use cases for the uh, proximity area of, of the city is the study we conducted on the accessibility of Barcelona climate shelters uh, to for its vulnerable uh, populations. So um, first of all, what is a climate shelter? Um, I mean, climate shelters are public spaces uh, designed to uh, provide protection during extreme weather um, events. Uh, our case study is Barcelona, so we, we analyze summer climate shelters, but winter ones do, uh, do exist as well. Um, uh, the Barcelona network uh, comprises of 360 summer shelters, which are located in indoor spaces such as libraries, schools, or civic centers, or in outdoor spaces such as uh, parks and, and, and gardens. And these are places they are free to access uh, where the, a, a person can go into and they can find uh, fresh water, seating, and some of them organize activities. So it's a network that is activated by the municipalities during the summer months and during the winter months to provide um, a refuge for, uh, for, for people. So the official municipal data say that 98% of residents have a climate shelter within a 10 minute walk of, uh, of their residence. However, what we wanted to, like we wanted to dig a little bit deeper into the data to see if this was actually the case, and especially focusing on, 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 uh, on it vulnerable um, population. So what do we mean by it vulnerable population? Um, and where are they uh, located in, in Barcelona? According to, to a report by uh, Lancet Europe report, the, the people that are more uh, vulnerable during this type of um, weather conditions are children under four and older adults. Um, so the first step that we did, and this is like an um, uh, interactive map, is to map their density in, in in Barcelona. So darker color means more density. Um, I'm a, actually like a background, I'm an economist turned geographer, so you're going to see a lot, of, a lot of maps in this in this presentation. So the first step is to map, uh, to define who are uh, the vulnerable population and map where they, where they are in Barcelona. Okay, so this is, yeah, you can go. So to go back to our research, questions, are vulnerable population covered by, by climate shelters in, in Barcelona? You can, yeah. 
Um, and this is the results, which I hopefully is going to, yeah, OK. <laughs> <It's gonna laughs> um, so as you can see, the, the white dots is where the climate shelters are. Um, and we made it so that is this is like interactive. You can click on the on the on the dot and see uh, what type of shelter it is. And the blue area is the coverage. Um, what does the coverage means? Is basically um, if you live in the blue area, you have a shelter accessible um, in 10 minutes uh, walking. And we recalculated these 10 minutes to normally in in papers you see when you see 10 minutes. Uh, like it is not scaled on on the person who walks, so it's like a, it takes into consideration an average adult, which normally walks at five kilometers per hour. We rescale this to to three comma to eight kilometers per hour to um, basically indicate a lower pace of of a child or a older older person. So everything that you see uh, in in blue is covered by. Um, by a shelter, and there are some some spaces in. Who, who, those of you who are familiar with the city, this is close to Hospitalet, doesn't have accessibility, and this part uh, as well in Eschempla, Esquerra, creo, and 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 like some parts of of Les Corts. So the results um, is that 90% of uh, vulnerable residents in in the city have access to a shelter within uh, 10 minutes walking and 35,000 do not have um, this type of uh, service available uh, by walking. Okay, so um, I mean first glance the coverage is not as uh, is quite good however we wanted to like look a little bit more into the data to see if um, we can improve accessibilities. So the first analysis that we conducted is to look at the um, uh, at the variation by, by district. As you know, Barcelona has, has 10 districts, which are an um, agglomeration of uh, neighborhoods. So there is quite a difference between, I mean, all of them reach 75% uh, of population covered. However, there is quite a difference between Ciudad Vella and like Les Corses and, and Sanz and Montjuic. Uh, but actually, this is kind of the next result is the most interesting one. Uh, hopefully the map is gonna is gonna upload. Yeah, no, maybe. Uh, okay, so the the program is activated throughout the July. Yeah, no, <laughs> July, August, and September months. Um, and what we found out is that you can start the animation. Basically, what happens in August? Yeah, the many shelter close. So there is a reduction. At Forty percent of the shelter. There in, theory, in theory, they have to provide uh, refuge for people. Actually, in the August, they're closed, which I mean is also the hottest month. Um, so yeah, still 75% of vulnerable residents are covered, but it's quite a big difference from the 98% go down to 90, down to 75 uh, in August. So yeah, um, okay. So uh, basically. So we kind of answered the question, our research question, which was the, the accessibilities. Uh, how is the accessibility of climate shelter for um, vulnerable population in Barcelona? And we saw that uh, despite some gaps, it's quite good. Um, however, the city council does have an objective to improve accessibility for all the citizens like all the citizens uh, should have access to a climate shelter within a five minute walking um, by 2030. And although this target, uh, this target demonstrates quite a commitment to equitable access, it does uh, comes with some challenges. So for example, we identified extending oper operating hours, uh, diversifying shelter type, because you might have accessibility to like a swimming pool, but you maybe don't want to go to a swimming pool to, to, find, to find protection. And also like managing capacity, which is a, a variable we did not analyze in our study, which is like uh, denser areas, maybe the shelter cannot accommodate all the people that need to, that need to access it. Um, but especially what we will try to do in the collaboration with the city council is to kind of um, shift the paradigm between what is partially covered so all the city should have the blue map, 
to like a people centric approach. So how many people can access this type of, uh, this type of uh, services? Um, so yeah, so another important part is we try to make, <laughs> we try to share knowledge and, and make these kind of things um, available to the public. So we created an interactive map available in English, Catalan and Spanish, where you can kind of uh, filter by category. So you can put the civic centers, which is, I like the ex this example. Um, you can see all the uh, civic center available to you as climate shelters. And you can you also um, do it by month. So you can see this is availability of, of this type of shelter in July. And as soon as you filter August, it's yeah, quite reduced. So anyway, um, this is what we're trying to do uh, in, in the proximity lab and yeah, let's get in touch if you want to, I don't know, this part is yours normally, so <laughs> if you want to collaborate. <laughs> um, but yeah. Wonderful. A round of applause, please.